Moreover, an occurrence of suspicion is revealed by the author of the Apocalypse, as we find in the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel the very same description of the same atmosphere and the same four creatures of the zodiac. And I looked, and behold a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, and the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle. It is blatantly obvious that the author of the Apocalypse heavily borrowed from the book of Ezekiel and of the Zodiac. Yet, more skeptical is both authors were said to be exiled. John to the island of Patmos, and Ezekiel to Babylon. Thus, the Apocalypse clearly enumerates the four main constellations along the ecliptic, the zodiac constellation of Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, and the Eagle, the constellations that denote the seasons form a square or cross. But since there are exactly 24 star sectors, or wings, proceeding from the pole, each one of these animal constellations has exactly six sectors of direct ascension, that is, they have six wings around them. In other words, each animal constellation is located in the region that is covered by these six sector wings on the celestial sphere. It is notable that all of this is absolutely accurately described in the Apocalypse, in which we read that. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. The eyes here are the stars. By the way, the Greek text formulates this as inside and around these animals covered with eyes inside and around are most probably constellations, and so the eyes in question should be stars. Indeed, they are drawn in precisely this form on any medieval star chart. hand of him that sat on the throne a book, written within, and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a Lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain. The lion is the constellation Leo, the lamb is Aries. One thing should be noticed here, it is that the lion is identical with the lamb. It is said in the Apocalypse that the former could open the book of the seven seals but it is the lamb on whom that function devolves because the imitation celebrates the vernal sun or Aries and not the summer solstice sun or the lion. These are in fact the two emblematic animals under which the sun possesses its full power. Under Aries quite brilliant and glorious, under Leo warm ardent, and invigorating. Among most ancient nations, we find the sun represented as proceeding daily from east to west in a chariot drawn by the finest and swiftest horses, and so dispensing light to the earth. In the sacred books of the ancient Persians it is said, praise to the sun that drives with four horses in his rapid course. Hence, amongst the Persians, horses were sacred to the sun, and were sacrificed to it. Gershus describes a similar procession, in which he says, the chariot consecrated to Jupiter was drawn by white horses, it was followed by a horse of extraordinary size, which they called the horse of the sun. Herodotus, says of the Massagiate, of the gods, they worship the sun alone, to which they sacrifice horses. 
The reason of this custom is, to give to the swiftest of all the gods the swiftest of all animals. Isidore, of Seville, observes, the Romans gave the sun a chariot drawn by four horses, which by their colors were to represent the four seasons and the four elements. The sun has four. It is a rule which cannot be deviated from, a rule established by antiquity for very good reasons. The four horses are symbols of the four different appearances of the sun, and of the four seasons. Their names prove it. According to Fulgentius, they are called Erythrinus, the Red, Actian, the Luminous, Lampos, the Resplendent, and Philogenus, the Friend of the Earth, which relate manifestly to the different degrees and appearances of the solar light. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth, conquering, and to conquer. First and foremost, all four horses are the carriers of the sun, and are colored according to the season its rider represents. The first horseman rides a white horse, always associated with the good guy. He wears a crown and carries a bow. He rides out as a conqueror bent on conquest. In spring the world is renewed. Our hero, the sun, has conquered the dark, cold and death of winter with its warmth and life-giving energy in spring. Notice, how he is turned around, aiming his bow at winter. The word crown is from the Latin, root word corona. A crown originally meant to represent the golden rays of the sun and associated the ruler with the power of the sun and authority to rule. The rider wears the crown because the sun is exalted in Aries and in this house he is called the conquering sun. He arose from the dead, the dead of winter to save us. The bow he wields, is an age-old symbol of many sun gods. Mithras, Helios, Hercules, Saturn, Marduk, Krishna, and most notably Apollo, all exhibit the bow and arrow. The bow and arrow, as attributes of Apollo, represent the sun's energy, its rays and its fertilizing and purifying powers. Here the bow illustrates that he, the sun and spring, plans to conquer death and winter. The sun will be resurrected. And when he had opened the second seal I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. The red horse and its rider symbolize the summer sun and season. The word here translated as red, is formed from the Greek term byros meaning fire, certifying the indication of the scorching heat of summer. And this power that was given to him to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, does not apply to any enmity between man and man, it alludes to the destructive aspect of the sun, at times the sun can be as destructive as it is beneficial, its rays can easily scorch the land, cause drought and leave crops wilted and dead. Not to mention, locust swarms usually occur after severe drought or towards the end of summer, and was given unto him a great sword. Again the sword is symbolic of the sun, Often, the sword is primarily a mere symbol of martial virtues, especially of manly strength and courage. It is thus also a symbol of power and of the sun, with respect to the active masculine principle as well as to the darting, piercing sword-like rays of the sun. For our ancestors, the heat of the sun in summer became like a devouring lion. When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see! And I beheld and lo a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. This verse gives us a splendid hint of the astronomical situation, which we will accordingly appreciate and notice. The black horse indicates the fall or the autumnal season, when the sun has crossed the equinox and the days are growing darker and shorter, and giving us the unmistakable signs of dreary approaching winter. The scales represent the constellation Libra and the sun's fall below the equator as it heads towards its death at the winter solstice. Scales represent the fall equinox where there is an equal length of day and night. 
There are six months above the equator and six months below. One pan of the scales represents the six months above, positive and life affirming, hence the white horse, and the other pan represents the six months below, negative and life effacing, thus the black horse. This horseman is told, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, exulting over the abundance after harvest and the cheapness of bread, the staff of life, throughout the world. Meaning, reserve your stockpile, winter is coming. If the ancients had not reserved enough food by this time of the year, they could easily starve to death in the winter months ahead. And as some of the products namely olives and grapes were not yet mature or ripe enough for oil and wine, they were admonished to be careful of them. Hence they said, And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. When he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. This fourth rider death mirrors the dying sun, and the pale horse implies the winter season, when death comes apparently to all vegetable life. The grass that was green and growing is now withered and brown in every field, not a bud dare open nor a flower show its petals to the storm. The chilling winds keep up a moan among the leafless trees, all insect life is hushed as well as the music of the birds. The earth is frozen like rocks of adamant, thus the saying, dead of winter. The English word hell in the Bible is being translated from the Greek word Hades. The word Hades has mistakenly become synonymous with the relatively new concept of a Christian fiery hell. The Greek word Hades actually means the cold, dark underworld, a shadowy, gloomy netherworld cut off from God, Aries, Spring. What is that, but the winter? Dr. Wachman Reiner says, the river of Hades is that part of the starry stream of the Milky Way which is below the equator, and which the sun passes in October and November, represented by the Scorpion and Sagittarius. This part of the zodiac was called Hades by the ancient priests of the sun, of the realm of the dead the winter months. And so it is said, Hell or Hades followed with him. The fourth horseman of death kills with all the negative aspects of the preceding horseman. The Apocalypse says, and power was given unto them, meaning the pale horse and its rider, over the fourth part of the earth, meaning the ending quarter of winter on the zodiac. He kills with the sword given to the second horseman of summer, whose effects ripple down to winter. He destroys with hunger, as most life in nature starves and dies in winter, and he destroys with the beasts of the earth. The constellations have been called the beasts of the earth. The word zoo and zodiac comes from the Latin zodiacus, or Greek zodiacos, and means little animals. This is to say that not only is man destroyed by the troublesome plights of summer, and with Libra whose scales tip us below the equator into darkness, but man is destroyed by all the beasts of the field, by all the negative aspects of each of the zodiac signs. The four, living creatures severally cry, come and see, at the opening of the first four seals. Let it be known, come and see is a mistranslated corruption. For in the Greek Septuagint and Latin Vulgate it is rendered only as come. The living creatures are not telling the author to come and see. The for living creatures, fixed spring, summer, autumn and winter are calling forth and inviting the four horsemen, to start their designated cardinal seasons, 